I would like to show you exactly how we calculate skew using a binomial distribution. So my binomial distribution, my probability mass function is charted right here and we'll see that it has positive skew and or right skew. Positive skew means that the density has a longer tail to the right side, which is true of the binomial. <laughs> I'd like to illustrate the calculation of skew using a binomial distribution, although we could use any discrete distribution, but the binomial is convenient. The bi my binomial has the following parameters, n equals 4, so it's a very small sample, and the probability of success is 40%, so that's denoted by p. So this binomial has five possible outcomes, the number of successes from 0 to 4, and then here's f of x under the binomial, and this is the probability mass function, or PMF, which I have charted here below, so here's our bi binomial, and then in this column, I solve for the mean or average of this binomial, which is the weighted average of the possible values of x. So for each row, it's x multiplied by f of x. 0 times 13% is 0. 1 multiplied by 34.6% is 0 0.35 if we round. Then the sum of these is the weighted average of possible values of x, which is the mean or average of the distribution. And we would be able to confirm this because the binomial is elegant in a few ways, including we know that the average of the binomial is just n times p, and you can see 4 times 0.4 is 1.6. So I want to use the 1.6 as the mu when I compute the central moments. So here's my general rth moment, where r can be 1, 2, 3, 4, even higher, although we usually don't go higher than 4. And those would refer to the first, second, third, or fourth central moments, or, or we could say moments about the mean or around the mean. So my when r is 1, that's my first moment, and the expected value here is 0. When r is 2, then I would actually get the second central moment, which is the variance. And, and I'm showing that here in this column here under central moments. And you can see the expression here. My last video was on variance, so I won't belabor this, but we just have f of x multiplied by the difference between x and the mean quantity squared. So it's per this expression, but where r is 2 in the case of the variance. So the sum of this, these rows, in this case, happens to be about 0 0.96, which is the second central moment, and corresponds to the variance of this distribution. Now for the binomial, the variance is also elegant. So we wouldn't need to go to this trouble either, because the, uh, we know in the case of the binomial that our variance is p multiplied by 1 minus p, multiplied by n, which in this case is 40% multiplied by 1 minus 40% multiplied by 4. So that I have 40% times 60%, which is 0 0.24 multiplied by 4, which is 0 0.96, which matches my variance. And then finally, what I did in this column is I took the square root of that to get the standard deviation, which is our sigma. So, uh, and, the, and rounded it as uh, point, 0 0.98. Okay, so then in this column, I have the, I'm going to get the third central moment. Same pattern, right, for each cell here, I have f of x, 13%, multiplied by uh, the, let's see, oh, d, uh, x of 0 minus the mean of 1.6, but this difference, instead of being squared, is cubed because we're doing the third central moment. So see how essentially similar to the variance, except we're cubing instead of squaring this difference. And so we're just implementing this pattern where r equals 3 in the case of the skew. So here again, we have f of x, 
30 for for the second row now we have f of x of 34.6% multiplied by the difference between 1 and 1.6 that quantity cubed is right here and that value is negative 0 0.07 so that if we sum these rows then the summation here of in this case 0 0.192 is the third central moment or third moment around the mean and again it's this expression but where r equals 3 now this third central moment well recall that the variance isn't really that intuitive it's in units squared well the third central moment is even less intuitive it's in units cubed so notice that the skew is not exactly the third central moment. It is standardized, we could say, by dividing by, because its units are cubed, dividing by the standard deviation cubed. And so the final step here in getting my skew for this binomial is simply to divide, take that 0 0.192, which is the third central moment, and divide it by, you can see here, cell G15 cubed, which is the standard deviation cubed. So that's the denominator here, dividing by uh, 0 0.98 rounded. So you can see a little bit of an adjustment at these low values. But then I'm getting the skew here for this binomial of 0 0.204. And if the, if the distribution were symmetrical, we would expect a zero. So for example, the normal distribution has a skew of zero. We're getting here a positive value, so we would call this positive skew. We could also call it right skew. I like positive skew a little better because the thing about positive or right skew is that the distribution tends to lean to the left. And I think the best way to think about positive skew is simply that it means the density here, if, the, if we look at the uh, PMF, the density is longer to the right. If we had negative skew, the density would be longer to the left. And this binomial has positive skew with where the uh, distribution density is longer to the right-hand side. So the one final thing that I wanted to show you, as I did in the video for variance, is compare the population to the simulation. Because you keep in mind here that we have fully characterized a distribution here, a binomial distribution. And we do that when we do this, we are dealing in uh, accurate expected values. Put another way, we can say this distribution characterizes the population. However, realistically, in many cases, we're dealing actually with samples. So as before, I'm taking this binomial and generating a, I'm running a simulation. I'm uh, drawing 100 random draws from this binomial. Simulation 1 to 100, I generate a random, here's a random number generator, a continuous uniform from 0 to 1 via the inverse transform method allows me to draw from the binomial distribution. So my values here in this column, these are random x's, but they're drawing the random from this binomial. So we expect this sample to end up roughly where the population is, but not exactly due to sampling variation. So, and I, as before, I've hidden min, most of the rows here, 1 to 3, skipping 4 to 97, then the rest. So here we have a simulation, 100 random X's drawn from this binomial. And then you can see here, I'm calculating a, I'm on my way to calculating a second central moment and a third central moment. In the case of the second central moment, X minus the mean that I happen to get for this sample that difference squared right each time I rerun the sample I'll hit F2 I'll get different values so the at the bottom here the summation here it if I take that sum and divide by a hundred I'm gonna get the 
population variance. If I take the square root of that, I'm going to get the population standard deviation. And if instead, if instead I take the square root of this 104 divided by n minus 1 instead of n, I'm going to get the sample standard deviation. Okay, but my real focus here was to just show you this column where I'm calculating x minus the mean for this sample and that difference cubed in each row, right? Here's the formula, x minus the mean, in this case a sample mean, that difference cubed. And then the summation of those gives me 12.4, such that if we divide by 100, then I can rightly call this the third central moment for this simulation. My third central moment here is uh, 0 0.124, and you can see the population has 0 0.192. So I have the sampling variation. I expect it to have this value, but it's, it ends up here for this sample. And so that means if I come down here, and then I can standardize this by dividing the third central moment for this sample by the standard deviation cubed. See how we divide that by this standard deviation cubed. And then I would rightly get a skew, but it really it treats this simulation as a population. And just to check that calculation I have in the cell next to it, we could have gone straight to Excel, right, with skew.p. That means the population skew, and they do match. However, realistically, in most cases, I actually have a sample, and that's the intention behind running the simulation. So that I need to make an adjustment. It's analogous to the adjustment that I make in the case of the sample standard deviation, where I divide it by n minus 1 instead of n. Here, I won't go into the, I won't bore you with the particulars of the adjustment, but it's, it is uh, actually analogous. There's a slight adjustment here, and I think of this as a, a conservatism that slightly increases the value, and I get here a sample skew of 0 0.125, and just to show you that with that adjustment, that would match the Excel function of skew, which um, instead of skew.p, the skew function here is a sample skew. So these will also match. And you can see I can rerun this, and if I rerun this, I get 0.174, um, and we're again expecting a positive skew here in the neighborhood of 0.2, but each sample is giving us a slightly different result. So that's population skew up here and then how we would go about a sample skew. Hope that's helpful.